Hello folks and uh, welcome to episode 3 of my uh, Model Rocket series. I've unboxed my Estes Pro Series 2 Leviathan. Unboxed. Um, you can see the uh, stats of it um, just up there. Uh, looking at uh, about a metre in length. Uh, pretty cool. About uh, half a kilo. Um, so moving over. Um, on here we have the... Uh, motor mount tube, uh, which my reloadable CTI motor casing goes into. Um, inside that there's the lower body tube, uh, slots with the fins, the coupler there, uh, which will mount the upper body tube to the lower, and then on top of that goes the nose cone, um, and uh, you see the parachute will attach to uh, that little eyelet there. Um, and then moving down, I've just got a building tool uh, we've got some uh, motor centra uh, rings, some fins, and uh, and then in this bag we've got the parachute with the uh, recovery elastic cable and the uh, motor retention uh, screw. Uh, in here that's just the uh, little card they use to uh, basically mount the recovery system into the uh, top of the uh, upper body tube. Um, got the instructions over here as well and it came with a a nice fluorescent warning. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get on with building it, and I uh, hope they'll turn out pretty nice. Okay, so the, the format for this is uh, going to be... I'll show you, as you can see on the screen at the moment, a picture of the uh, instructions. Uh, step by step, step one, step two, step three, etc. Um, and uh, then the series of pictures which follow... Uh, will then show me uh, completing that entire section. Um, so, as you can see here, the uh, first thing to do, section one, assemble a motor mount. Um, so, uh, the picture that you can see now uh, is me just uh, stretching out the spacer ring on the nose cone uh, to make sure that it fits over the motor mount tube. Uh, so after a little bit of fettling, um, that went on, and then I was uh, free to put my uh, spacer rings over the motor mount tube and uh, tack that on with the uh, wood glue that you can see in the background there. So uh, just using a paintbrush to uh, apply that. Uh, there's a uh, sort of finished product, as it were, and the uh, picture after that is uh, showing me putting on the uh, second spacer ring. You can see the uh, fins there used uh, to make sure that the spacing for that is absolutely exact. Uh, and then uh, once I'd uh, established that that was the case, uh, we then went on to um, putting some uh, glue around the uh, end of the tube for the final spacer ring. Uh, so once that was on, uh, you can see here the final product. Um, it then just needed uh, some final bits of glue uh, just to make sure everything was absolutely completely solid uh, so there I am putting uh, the finishing touches to that um, so after that was complete that was that section the next section is um, it's basically uh, going to be uh, as you can see mounting the uh, fins into the lower part of the body tube and uh, this first step that you can see there they say to spread some glue around the inside uh, I wasn't such a big fan of that um, so I just uh, glued it in place once it was in as uh, any glue you did put in was just going to slide away uh, I used epoxy on the bottom as you'll see later uh, so I've got no issues with uh, making sure that that's nice and secure in there uh, after that um, basically I slid as per the instructions without the glue the uh, motor mount tubing with the uh, spacer rings into the lower body portion uh, just bit by bit so you can see that there it's about halfway in just uh, slowly working it down uh, all the way through making sure that it uh, was going in without doing any damage to the outer tube uh, and then uh, making sure the uh, motor mount tube was flush with the uh, end of the uh, lower uh, body tube that you can see there uh, which it is 
Uh, and then, as I say, uh, once that was firmly in place, I then had uh, a ring of wood glue that I put around the uh, top spacer ring there uh, just to secure it in place, uh, as obviously uh, the motor is in the motor mount tube, so there's quite a few forces being uh, dealt onto that. Um, so once that was in and all dried, I then went on to putting the fins in. Uh, that was just a case of... Uh, putting some glue in uh, tactical areas basically around the bottom edge of the fin and uh, on the sides uh, and then uh, sliding them into place uh, which you can see in that picture there um, all firmly fitted and at 90 degrees uh, so then I uh, did that for the remaining fins as you can see uh, they're all in there uh, so at that stage they were all just uh, put in with wood glue uh, so I wanted to obviously make sure they were entirely secure. Uh, the instructions recommend using wood glue for this next stage, but I broke out my fresh epoxy, uh, which is uh, always good for uh, when you're wanting strength in a job. Um, so yeah, I opened that up, and then as you can see, I started to uh, apply it to the uh, fins here along the base. Um, that took a while, obviously, because I was letting it dry, in between each uh, application um, but eventually it was all done as you can see in this uh, picture um, so those fins are now on there uh, as secure as you like and they aren't going anywhere uh, other than staying on the body tube and uh, going where that goes eh? ha. Uh, so the next section uh, was basically to uh, put the um, well, it, I'd call it a collar, really, um, to join the lower body tube to the uh, upper body tube. Um, it said to recommend doing the bottom first. Um, for whatever reason, I did the uh, top. I think I was still letting my fins uh, completely dry there as I was doing this. Um, so I marked it halfway down the body tube, which is about five centimeters, as you can see with that line there, uh, giving me a, a line to push it to. Um, so I then uh, glued it in place into my upper body tube, uh, which you can see there, it's all nice and secure. Uh, I then put the uh, bottom half on, um, and I had a small little ridge there, which I uh, took the uh, sanding block to just to make it smooth. Uh, once I was uh, reasonably happy with that, I then went on to, uh, well, I stuck it all together. Uh, as you can see, that's the, the final result. Um, starting to get pretty big there uh, but looking pretty damn awesome so on to the next step uh, was to put the launch lugs on obviously uh, making sure that those are on absolutely perfectly because any misalignment in those uh, is really going to give you some problems um, so I uh, marked the fuselage uh, and then uh, set about epoxying the uh, launch lug as you can see there uh, before placing it onto the uh, body tube very, very carefully, ensuring it was absolutely in the middle uh, and perfectly uh, parallel with the body tubing. Um, so, as you can see, the final result of that is in this picture here. Uh, the two lugs uh, exactly lined up, pointing towards the uh, top and the center of the body tubes uh, for the uh, launch rail to go through. Um, so, that's good. So once that was done, uh, we went on to the uh, motor retention ring um, and uh, I roughed up the inside as per the instructions. I then placed it uh, onto the top uh, with some epoxy and uh, after I did that, uh, you can see it was all uh, in place and I uh, ran a ring of epoxy where the uh, lower spacing uh, ring meets the uh, lower body tube uh, just to make it absolutely secure so you can see that there in the picture uh, after that I then on to the uh, shock cord um, which obviously is uh, the uh, cord that connects the nose cone to the body um, this is done by initially cutting out a uh, piece of card uh, which I've done there uh, and uh, then putting some epoxy on section 2 uh, after that you then uh, fold it over uh, putting the uh, elastic cord in place uh, and then uh, I put some epoxy all over that and uh, held it in place for half an hour until it went off um, and then obviously it ended up being as solid as a rock uh, and then I was free to put it into the body tube which you can see me doing here 
Um, so then I uh, held it in place there. Uh, the final result was uh, this. Uh, so you can see it's all uh, very securely in the body tube there. Uh, so that I'll be able to withstand the force of the uh, hot ejection gases pushing the nose cone out and uh, yeah deploying the parachute um, so the next section here um, is just doing the nose cone and uh, parachute assembly uh, so the first thing to do was to take the hobby knife out and cut out this triangle at the bottom part of the nose cone here that came out nice and easy after that uh, just showing you a picture of the parachute uh, nice bright red colour and uh, 24 inches of uh, awesome uh, parachute red awesomeness what else can you say <laughs> uh, so there it is after I'd attached it to the nose cone uh, looking very pretty um, now this doesn't actually come with the kit it's something I've bought separately uh, it's just a square of Nomex uh, to act as permanent wadding uh, obviously the Nomex has got some uh, Kevlar in it etc uh, which means that then instead of uh, having bits of bog roll scattered all over uh, the field in which I'm flying it um, this will then act as a protection for my parachute and uh, as you can see here threading it through the uh, elastic cord uh, it'll stay uh, attached to the rocket uh, after it has been ejected uh, and done its job uh, so that was a good investment so I recommend you getting uh, one of those uh, as you can see here that's the recovery setup so uh, the Nomex on the uh, left there parachute uh, on the right nose cone in the middle with it all uh, joined up um, and then after that you can see I was just uh, folding it up as per the instructions, putting it into the uh, tubing, into the body tubing, putting the nose cone on top uh, so it's all uh, ready to go in theory. And uh, after that, I decided uh, just to test to make sure that my uh, CTI uh, motor casing goes inside the uh, motor mount uh, and is retained in place. Uh, which I'm glad to say, as you can see in this next picture, it does. Uh, it fits perfectly. Obviously, there's no motor uh, actually in there at the moment, so it's uh, completely safe. Um, and uh, then, yeah, that completed the build. Uh, so uh, next, you can see the uh, rocket fully completed. And that's it, a completed rocket. It was a really fun build. Uh, with glue drying time it took around about 8 hours so uh, that's not too bad at all um, I hope you enjoyed the step by step uh, commentary and you found that useful um, it all works really nice um, so the next job will be painting it uh, so I'll go out and get those tomorrow um, and then that will be uh, episode 4 but uh, from episode 3 that's it and uh, thank you very much for watching